There's a few ways to import content into WordPress, but in this tutorial, I'll be focusing on importing WooCommerce products in particular, and more particularly, in bulk, without any fuss by using one of the best import methods I've come across called the WP All Import Plugin. One of the biggest problems with WordPress and WooCommerce is the vast amount of choices you have when choosing a plugin, specifically to this video, an import plugin. WordPress has multiple different developers creating similar plugins that basically does the same thing, but they're not all great plugins, so you mostly end up with a plugin that does very little before you have to end up buying the pro version to do the next basic thing. That's the crazy world of open source and makes filtering through the WordPress repository a slight bit of a nightmare trying to find the right plugin for you. Sure, we can use the WooCommerce built-in import function, but I've found it to be clunky and very hard to use because the user has to adopt their WooCommerce content in their CSV files specific to the fields that WooCommerce offers, and all that without having any kind of preview of what you're importing. Aside from the previously noted drawback, you require an extra program on your computer that will allow you to edit CSV files, as opposed to logically adding your product content to an Excel file and just uploading it that way. There's a lot more to the CSV file program, but I'm not delving into that, as after using this method in this video, I'm that confident that you'll never look back. The plugin I'm using for this, however, called WP All Import, has a step-by-step -step wizard and a click drag and drop function which allows file types like XML, CSV or even Microsoft Excel's file extension to be easily uploaded. Then assign relevant fields and edit your input content like pricing, brands, custom taxonomies and an endless list of fields before pressing that import button. Users looking to create a drop shipping store with thousands of products especially has a huge benefit to gain from this video and the plugin we're showcasing today. We'll be working mostly in the back end of our WordPress site so let's log in and get started. Okay, so our first step involves installing two plugins. So let's go to plugins and click add new. In the search box, we'll type WP all import. There are two plugins. The one is the main plugin, and the second one is an add on for WooCommerce products. So let's install the main plugin first. And then we'll install the add on for the WooCommerce products secondly. Okay. We can activate it here individually, but I'm going to go to Installed Plugins and activate the plugin first and then the add-on plugin. Then in your WordPress sidebar, you'll see a new menu item has been added called All Import. We'll go straight to New Import. In the Import screen, you'll see three buttons. The first one is for uploading a file. Second one is for downloading a file. And the third one is for using an existing file on your WordPress installation. When downloading a file would be typically when, for example, you have a dropshipping account with a supplier and they are providing you with a CSV file or an XML feed. In this case, you can click on download a file. If they supplied you with the URL, you can enter the URL here. If they supplied you with an FTP account, you can input the details here. If you use an existing file, this will be relevant if you have a file uploaded in your WordPress installation. Let's upload our file and you can select your file. I've already prepped a CSV file so I'll select the one that I've prepped and I'll click open. You'll see a notification saying that the upload has been completed and we'll select new items and create new WooCommerce products. 
let's continue to step two. Here you'll see a preview of the files content that has been imported. If the content makes sense, then the file has successfully imported all the content appropriately. If it doesn't make sense, sometimes your delimiter may be set to, for example, a colon. And I'll show you what it looks like if that was the case. So if the file wasn't imported properly, you'll see something that doesn't make sense, which looks like this. In this case, our, our delimiter was a comma. So we'll switch it back to a comma and apply. Next, we'll continue to step three. And here we can drag and drop our CSV fields into our WooCommerce product fields. So to set the title, we'll select name, click drag and drop for the description. We'll click drag and drop and do the same with short description. can preview this and each section we can preview before continuing on to the next one I'm not going to do that but if you are unsure you're welcome to always preview with advanced options for most file types we wouldn't need to change anything here so I'm going to leave it as it is and continue to the WooCommerce add-on section You'll see that the default settings are applied here and in most cases these will be sufficient so we can skip over these. Next let's continue and add the SKU. Then we'll select the regular price and then the sale price. Next we'll adjust our prices, these are if you would like to add a markup to your price. So on your regular price, if you wanted that 45 to include 20%, we would set it to 120%. And your sell price, we'll add a discount and give it a 10% markup. Here you have some options that you can choose. I'm going to leave them as they are. Scrolling down a little bit, we can select if it's a virtual product or not a virtual product. We can select if it's a downloadable product or not a downloadable product. These are fine as they are at the moment. If you're wondering what XPath is, XPath is a syntax for defining parts of an XML document and is mostly used by advanced users, so we won't be using this here. Next, let's head to Inventory. We'll select Manage Stock and by Stock Quantity, we'll add our stock. So in stock will be 1 and our low stock threshold, I'll just add the value of 3. Our stock status set automatically based on the stock quantity and then allow backholders. And again, we'll just leave these options as they are. Then for shipping, we'll add the weight field. For dimensions, we'll add the length, the width, and we'll drag and drop the height as well. If there was shipping classes set up in WooCommerce, you could select it here. Then link products. Currently, I'm going to skip this section and attributes will be, for example, the color. So we'll add the attribute name and we'll add the attribute value. We can leave these as they are and head over to advanced where we'll set enable reviews and where we can choose if we would like to feature a product. In this case, I'm going to say no. And then our catalog visibility, so we'll leave this on default. And then add on options. We can set out of stock status for missing records. 
where we can disable auto SKU generation. I'm going to leave this on default as well. Minimize our WooCommerce add-on tab and head over to our images where we can add our images to this box. So let's go to our images field then click, drag and drop. You'll see in our file that our images are separated by commas and this is the comma that you would add in there. So the comma is correct and we'll do a preview test as well run a test and the images were successfully downloaded and dismiss this message for our images all of these options are fine as they are at the moment so we'll leave them on default then in the SEO and advanced options all imports gonna do that for us and I recommend we set the title which will of course just be the name So I would leave that out. The alt text and in this case we can select short description and we can set the description with the description and we'll leave these options on default. We can minimize the SEO advanced tabs and we can minimize the images tab. Next we'll skip over custom fields let's head over to the taxonomies categories and tags we'd like to add product categories in this case we'll pick each product has multiple product categories and we'll scroll to our categories and you'll see it set the categories separated by a comma so we'll click drag and drop and then we'll leave the rest of these fields out. If you had product tags, it would be the same process. So we would add tags, then we'll close the taxonomies, categories and tags section and select other product options. Again, I would leave all of these fields on default. However, for advanced users, this is quite useful. For example, if you have a custom template designed for your single product, you could select it here. I'm going to leave this on default and we can minimize this section and then function editor will be for advanced users which we won't be doing here so I'm just going to minimize this then finally if you are going to import future files like this you can save settings as a template and we'll name our template WP all import you'll see a drop down box next to this the next time we go into the import we'll be able to select the WP all import from this drop down and it'll sign all the settings that we've just run through. Next we'll continue to step four. We can set a unique identifier for each product it would generally be the SKU. Next up, it'll ask us if this import is run again and WP all import finds new or changed data. Would we create new products from records newly present in your file. Would we delete products that are no longer present in your file or update existing products which changed in your data file. And we'll leave this on default. And then under scheduling options, you'll see a message saying to run this import on a schedule you must use the download from URL or use existing file option on the import settings page. So again this is a very useful setting if you were doing drop shipping because of course drop shipping CSV and XML feeds get updated on a regular basis generally around on a weekly basis or every other day and you can set your import to automatically fetch that file for example once every third day once every fourth day and so on then configure advanced settings I'd leave all these options as default um, as they are they are more than sufficient for most WordPress installations let's continue and we can confirm and run the import okay and the import is complete 
I've tried to give as much detail in this video as I could because some options, for example, can be quite confusing for beginners, especially if you don't know WordPress too well. If you are new to WordPress and WooCommerce, I can recommend checking out this video on installing WordPress and WooCommerce. I'm very sure that all newbies to the platform can certainly benefit from this video before moving on to individual features and functions like WP All Import. To close off, we recommend WP All Import to anyone. I'd like to make mention that we have no partnership with them, so I'm not getting paid for saying this or making this video. I just figured I'd like to make a video because I found the plugin to be great for beginners and just as great for experts wanting to use XPath functions. It's easy to use, to the point, from my experience so far, it seems to be bug free and the WordPress plugin is properly supported by its developers. The plugin we used was the free version, but I can't even imagine what the paid version is like, because the free version of this plugin has been fantastic. We've been using it in our company for about six months now and have not once required more functions than it offers already. If we ever do require the pro version and we end up buying the license, I'll be sure to create a video showcasing the pro features. That's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Till next time.